Hey everybody, it's Jason Creel, and you are on the Lawn Care Life live stream. We were doing these for a while, and then I took a break, and now I'm resuming. I can't promise we're going to do it every week, but here we are. Whether you're watching live or going to watch on replay, I'm Jason Creel, your host. Sometimes I have guests, sometimes it's just me. But kind of the concept here is you just bring your questions, lawn care related, lawn care business, about your own yard, whatever you want to talk about, lawn care related. We deal with it. We try to keep it around an hour. Leave your comments over here, and I kind of take them in order. So um, if if you will let me know, and we do this sometimes because you know how technical difficulties are, but if you can hear me good, well, I should say, uh, audio, video, if everything's looking good, if somebody would let me know in the comments section, that would be appreciated. So I'm going to... Uh, Give a little opening monologue here to give people a, little, a few minutes to join the conversation. But if you do have a question, you can go ahead and put it in the chat section. And uh, people are saying audio video is good. Here's uh, the situation. I was um, living out of my house um, for about 10 months. We were doing a, a pretty major renovation on our home and we were living in another house. So if you tuned in to past episodes, I was not at my house with a not the best internet, terrible lighting, and we just did the best we could. Okay, so I think my internet and lighting and everything is a little bit better um, in our current situation. So hopefully the quality is going to be uh, superior than what we've had to do in the past. So, um, but you know what? Something that I want to talk about is, is, you know, we were doing these maybe two months ago. So I'm going to say maybe we stopped in, in June or so, May, June, that was kind of big fertilizer season for us here in the South. Uh, now we're in August, getting fairly close to September. So times have changed on your yard. There's probably different things going on, different things going on with your lawn business. So hopefully we can have some fresh conversations that we haven't um, gotten to in the past. So with that being said, um, I've actually got a little a two week break or so in my lawn business. I got through with my applications and have a little time off. Army worms have been going nuts in Alabama. So I am running around spraying army worms. Uh, but other than that, I, I've got a little time off. I said we've been working on our house. So enjoying that. My yard's looking okay considering all the construction traffic I've had going on it, but it's doing okay. So. All right, we're going to take these comments here. We've got G Grip says, let's start now. He said that 28 minutes early. So we start at 8 o'clock on the button, just like we said. Wood Chops gives me uh, the, the peace sign. Michael says, good evening. Uh, what's going on? Hi, everybody. All right, I can hear you. So audio video is good. Everybody's saying audio video is good. So that's great. Um, Brandon says, hello from Metro Detroit. Nice to hear from you from Detroit. John French, I know Johnny lives up in Bloomington, Indiana. Hey, John, thanks for um, joining us. Let me see if I can get to the questions here. All right, here we go. G Group says, is yard book something you have to pay for? I downloaded it, but I can't figure out how to send an invoice to a text message like you said you do. I'm not sure if the if you take, like if you go to X, um, I'm not going to share my screen with you right now, but if you go to, if you create your invoice and then there, you just click the little tab that goes down where you can record a payment or what, but you, you can say send to customer and then it gives you the option of emailing or texting to it. I'm not sure if that is one of the premium features or if that's on the basic plan. So it's possible. I just don't know the answer. Um, it's possible that could be one of the premium features being able to text an invoice. Uh, but if not, you just when you're looking at your invoices, you click the little tab and, and it'll allow you to send it uh, as well as record payment, do other things. And that is one of the options is send when you click send, it'll say email or text. Hey, man, how are you doing, Jason? I'm doing pretty good for the most part. I actually have a few health issues. I'm not COVID, but I, I had some I uh, would call them digestive problems. I ended up in the hospital a couple weeks ago. So I'm actually 20 pounds lighter than the last time you probably saw me on here. I'm not wasn't trying to lose 20 pounds. It just 
happened on me. So I'm, I'm trying to gain weight back, but it's hard on because I'm on a little bit of a restricted diet trying to get healed up. I, I'm definitely feeling better, doing much better than I was a couple of weeks ago, but I've had, had a little rough go. Matthew says, hey, from Northern Kentucky. John, we heard from John here. Shane says, I have a sidewalk where I planted some bushes and I plan to remove. It's on a slope down to the house. I want to turn the whole bank in the mulch area with uh, with bushes, how to blend with the yard. Shane, I'm, unfortunately, I don't know if I'm uh, much of a landscape designer. Um, let's see. But, you, you know, again, I don't know where you live. Sometimes it is helpful if you guys, if you'll put on here where you're from. Like if you're asking a question about grass, you say, hey, I'm from Alabama and I have Bermuda grass. That's helpful as opposed to I'm in Idaho and I have, you know, Kentucky bluegrass or whatever. So um, in this situation, you plant some bushes and you want to remove those and slope down to the house. Um, sometimes what, what you have to do in my in my situation, if you're not a landscape designer, you may call this cheating. I don't know. You have to go through an area of town that has really nice landscaping and you have to kind of get your ideas from those people. So I'm sorry, I'm not, um, I'm not sure. I, I, I have learned some landscaping principles and I'm trying to incorporate, I just landscape my house and I've got to do the mulch and all that. But um, you have to decide if you're going to use a border, no border. I kind of like no border and keeping it mulch with string trimmer. Sorry, Shane, not a lot of help on that one. All right. Um, Lawn Masters LLC says, what's up, brothers? Let's see. CR, I am having issues with army worms. <laughs> As you are in good company. I can assure you. I'm near Marietta, Georgia. I've tried a lot of big box products, but still have issues. I use a product called Talstar Pro, and I use one ounce per gallon of water. Or if you're in a big machine, like I, I use my ride on sprayer, be one ounce per thousand square feet. So I'll, I'll load that up with the Talstar Pro, go through there, spray it. And it can it works on killing them on contact, but also if they were to go back and eat the grass later. Now it doesn't give you uh, that long protection. Like if another, like I had a yard I sprayed about three weeks ago, and then another wave came through, and, and the yard had recovered, started turning green again. Another wave come through and hammers it again. You know, so army worms have been tough this year. Uh, they don't kill the grass typically. I've had people, I've had several people say, I had one today send me a picture of his yard. He said, what are you going to do about this to fix this? Like he killed the yard. And I explained to him, it wasn't something I had done. It was army worms had done it and it wasn't dead. It would grow back. So my soil is orange clay. I'm getting it tilled on Friday. I'm adding compost on top of the soil. So the tiller guy can mix it in. How much compost should he till in? I don't know the answer to that. Um, I know sometimes if you end up mixing multiple soil types, that's not always the best either. But if you've just got terrible soil, again, I don't know where you live, what kind of grass you're trying to grow. I mean, you know, we have basically terrible soil in, in a lot of places where, where I work. But oftentimes the grass, while good soil is better, sometimes the grass will grow in, in pretty bad soil. Like for instance, Bermuda, we tell people it's like Bermuda. I mean, it'll basically grow in the crack of a sidewalk. It's not like it needs great soil. So I'm sorry, Loopy Lou, I don't know the answer, um, but I like your pursuit here. What is there to use in place of glyphosate that came since they are being pulled off the market? Um, I know, you know, obviously we're aware of some of the lawsuits with glyphosate. I don't know that it's necessarily pulled off the market yet. I, I can buy, I've heard a little bit about that. I don't know if substitute for that. Glyphosate, I think there's a product called Cheetah Pro or something like that. It's a non-selective herbicide. So you might just Google non-selective herbicides, but you can check out Cheetah Pro, I believe. They're going to be much more expensive, um, but there are some other non-selective herbicides. Now, dicamba, um, you know, I use products that have dicamba, and I didn't realize that it was being pulled off the market. Pursuit of Growth says, hey, everyone. Did Spectacle Flow get replaced with Moringo? It's 400 bucks a bottle, LOL. I'm not familiar with Moringo. I wonder if it's, is it the same active ingredient. Um, I would be interested to know about that. I'm still using Spectacle Flow. I ordered more this year than I ever have before because I'm hoping to use it both fall and also in spring. Hey, from Rockaway, New Jersey. Never been to New Jersey. I have made it to New York one time. Growing Greg says, hey, hey. 
got uh, Millie W is from Louisville, Colorado. Thomas says, hey, everybody. So we're getting lots of haze. Sky says hi. Ethan Brazil, what granular pre-emergent do you recommend for crabgrass? I'm sure the question has been asked before. Sorry. So, you know, your crabgrass, if you've got it now, um, you know, I've been doing some videos with post-emergent products like solitaire and go out and spraying it. Honestly, if it's in my yard right now, I'm just going to let it die. And again, I don't know where you live, but here in Alabama, I mean, in a month or so, it's going to really start slowing down growing. Uh, in a couple months, we might get a cold night and it zaps it, you know, and it's no more problem. And so next January or February, I'm going to go in and I'm going to use prodiamine. So if you can get a granular, it may be like a 007 with prodiamine, or you may get a 007 with dimension. Uh, prodiamine is probably going to be a little cheaper. And that's what I use for a crabgrass pre-emergent. I don't use granular. It's a little more expensive, but I understand if you don't have a spray tank, it may be the way to go for you. Did, did a scalp on my Bermuda uh, lawn, to level my lawn in Phoenix City about a month ago. Smoked the Bahia with MSM turf, you were make, recommended, but now I have a nut sedge come through. What's well, a cheap option to kill it? If it's just straight up nut sedge, uh, not Kalinga. Kalinga usually has a little spiky looking ball on it. Then you could go with sedge hammer or pro sedge. Um, those are, are very inexpensive. They work great on yellow nut sedge and purple nut sedge. If you've got a, a good bit of Kalinga, then you may, um, you know, if you want a product that's going to kill both, you could use like Certainty or Solero. I say kill both, control both, I should have said. Uh, they're hard, hard to kill. Or you go with Dismiss. Um, dismiss products are, will burn down the you know, the, the sedges or, you know, your Kalinga's nut sedge both, they kind of burn them down. They don't necessarily kill them, but you can give them a good whacking. So anyway, like I said, if it's just nut sedge, I'd go pro sedge or sedge hammer. If you got some Kalinga, I've been using Dismiss a lot, which Blindside has Dismiss in it if you want to do that. What's the best way to get an LLC? I've formed a couple of LLCs. Um, well, I had an attorney do one. Okay, you might find one of these websites you know google that has kind of the paperwork done for you i have an attorney that drew up the paperwork for me i had to file it with the secretary of state in my in this great state of alabama and um so anyway that that's how you, it's a legal deal so i'm not giving legal advice here but you you had to file your paperwork with your state Roundup versus other kill-off chems. Are you paying for label name, honestly? Uh, well, I mean, I think you're definitely paying for the label name. Um, it's glyphosate. You know, now, now, whether it may be slightly improved or not, I don't know. But I almost always buy the generic on those type products. To respond via text is part of the premium program. However, you can receive text message after you send. Okay, so this goes back to the yard book. They're saying um, being able to text your invoices is part of the premium program. So that's not on the free program. So that, thank you for that. All right. Ah, uh, and I have COVID. Sorry to hear that, Scott. Thoughts on how to oversee with Kentucky bluegrass? Wait two weeks before mowing. Use PGR. Um. We're, you know, we, we oversee, we don't do a lot of oversee, to be honest with you. So I'm probably not the greatest one to ask, Greg, but uh, we oversee with ryegrass here in Alabama and wait till the weather starts cooling off and you're going to get some rain and we throw it out there on a Bermuda. Now, probably would help to scalp a Bermuda down uh, low, and uh, but I don't, I don't know about a, a growth regulator. I'm not sure what the point would be of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're going to oversee, I would give it a little time to get established before you start hammering it with a lawnmower for sure. Uh, hello, guys. All right. A lot of people just want to say hello today. Shane says North Carolina mountains fescue. He was, he was the one talking about making your, um, your landscape and blend in, you know, I like azaleas. I don't know. I don't, I've seen azaleas on hillsides. He was talking about making a landscape. I, and I'm not afraid to bunch a bunch a, a bunch the same plant. Sometimes you know you try to mix it up. Sometimes it just looks beautiful to me to have like 20 azaleas on a hillside, you know. But that's just me. But um, somebody's give us five bucks. Cr is contributing to the channel here. I really appreciate that. You know, I, 
Um, thank you for that. How can you stop push mower from getting clogged when it's wet? Well, okay, you may have to raise your blade up. I mean, it sounds simple. You may have to wait later in the day when the grass dries out and I get out there early in the morning when it's due. Or you may have to get a little bit bigger, more powerful mower. So if you, you know, if I'm out there and it's bogging down, I'm thinking, well, let me let it dry out because that'll make a big difference. Um, but if you just like cutting grass when it's wet, it is more difficult, and your your mower may be a little underpowered. You may have to raise the blade where you're not taking quite so much off, so that it can handle the amount of grass. Lawn Masters LLC says, "How do you get your Bermuda green and super short? I've done it like one and a half inches, and it's yellow." LOL. That's a good question. I, I tell you what, I've, I've gotten in some conversations lately about people and their their brown yarn. Okay, I'm going to just take a minute to talk about this. People have been, to, they get a brown yard in August and September and they want to figure out why it's brown. Well, this year it's been a couple of things primarily. It's not been lack of water. We've had a lot of rain in my area. I understand where you live, it may not be as, as much rain. We've had a very... A uh, healthy amount of rain this year. Uh, if anything, more rain than we would would want. Um, so the grass is green, but if it starts growing fast, Bermuda grass. Like I'm cutting my grass an inch and a half, just like just like this guy. I'm cutting it inch and a half the, the pretty much the whole time from the very beginning. And when I start doing that in March, my grass is one of the first ones to turn green because I'm mowing the dormant off. I'm getting the sunlight down the roots and it turns green quick. And I tell people, if you want a green grass in the spring, mow it early. Now that's for us warm season people, okay? So my Bermuda's green, I'm mowing inch half. So about a month ago, and I'm mowing my grass pretty much weekly, sometimes even more than that. About a month ago, I raised it to an inch and three quarters. Now, why did I do that? Well, I feel like as you get into August, the days start getting a little shorter. The grass starts reaching a little bit more for sunlight. It starts getting just the tip of the grass is sometimes green. Um, now, I found if you cut it shorter, sometimes more than just the tip. But people that just insist on cutting it at an inch and a half, 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 unless you're going to cut it very often, you end up the grass is trying to stretch out a little bit further on just the tip of its green, and you're whacking it back to an inch and a half. But if you're only cutting it every 10 days or two weeks or so, and it's been fertilized, you, you know, it's, it's likely you're cutting a lot of the color out of it. So um, maybe do what I did. I gave up an inch and a half, and I bumped mine to an inch and three quarters. Okay, I gave in, and I've been able to keep mine green longer. People that mow less than once a week, I tell you, you're going to have to raise your blade. I mean, that's all I know. Um, do you have an opinion on uh, Fusillade 2? I have not used that. I'm sorry. I'm in my first year weed control and fertilization business in South Georgia. He's got centipede, Bermuda, St. Augustine, and Zoysia. My biggest struggle is grassy weeds. What products are best for these? Well, thank you for the question. I, I do use a lot of... Um, I use a lot of Celsius and certainty mixed together. I tell you, if you want to simplify things, just put those two together and on your warm season grasses, and that's not for cool season grasses. And, and it will work great. I mean, I've been, I've actually killed crabgrass in my own yard. I mean, I'm talking about killed it. I mean, well, it it was on life support. I'll say that does great on Dallas grass. I mean, I'm not saying kills Dallas grass, but works great and even in the cooler weather if you start getting some cool season grassy clumps like fescue and ryegrass clumps it works great so that you know you can do that or on your just zoysia and bermuda yards you can just go tribute total but i like the celsius certainty combo because you can use that on all four of your grass types all right bifin xt works great too i'm pretty sure he's referring to on army worms I have some dormants, Kentucky bluegrass. I put down Revive. I do thatch aerated section. Still having problems with the growth. I think it's affected by fungus. Again, guys, I'm sorry you're going to figure out. I don't know much about the uh, cold season grasses, but I know, you know, if you've been dealing with a lot of the weather, and I do want to get some guests on here that can, uh, cool season grass guests. I've had them on here before, and that's been very helpful. Um, but if it's, if you're having, you know, a lot of rain and, and the weather's starting to cool off a little bit, then you can have, you know, fungus. Uh, it, it wouldn't surprise me. I, you know, again, it seems like the, the cool thing about the cool season grasses is 
you guys just, you know, you screw the whole yard up, just till it up and overseed it, and it's, you got a new yard. You know, we don't, we can't quite make that happen down here. We've got a Honda push mower. Should I uh, save up upgrade to commercial mower, like 5,548 inch walk behind or something smaller? You know, if, if you're mowing for a, a living, I would say definitely I would. Um, whether or not the, the 48 walk behind is what you need or not would depend on what type of properties you're dealing with. If you're dealing with a lot of hills, great. If, if there wasn't a lot of hills, I would probably go with a standard or one that you ride on. Um, but yeah, if you're in business, I, I definitely think you should, uh, should try to get a, a zero turn mower. Ditto on the bifin. Okay. So he's saying uh, they're, they're talking about army arm control. I'm pretty sure. Shane says no border is helpful. Yeah. I like the no border look again. We just maintain it with string trimmer. Assuming you mean just grade down with mulch at the height of yard and edge with a weed eater. That's right. That's exactly what I mean. Looking for more yard maintenance ease versus designs become a nightmare in a mow. I've got a nasty hill on my side, side of my yard and it, you can't mow it. Um, I've thought about doing some landscaping. Sometimes I spray it with growth regulator. It's not landscape. It's just kind of weeds, a little bit of grass. Spray it with something to make it grow slower. So I, I feel your pain, Shane, a little bit on, on just managing tough to grow areas like that. Um, if you get, you know, you get it landscaped and mulch and all that, and you got you got to deal with the weeds and stuff like that. So we use, we put glyphosate and mix it. Uh, man, I can't believe I can't think of my product again, but miss another product keeps the weeds out for a long time. Sorry. All right. So everybody's talking about the bifenthrin here, the product for army worms. Um, would you use your lean to steer for prodiamine and spectacle flow apps? I don't. I, I, and this is a real big property. I pretty much still use my, I've got the Graham spray equipment rig. I pretty much pull a hose and spray. The reason, I mean, I've got great agitation in the tank. Um, it is smaller yards. They're not all yards are just perfectly square. And with that, with that hose in my hand, I mean, I can get right up next to the shrub and it's hard to do that with the, uh, with the machine. I know you get these, uh, what they call it. It's like the foam marking kits that people put on them, you know, but for us, like, especially in the, in early year when I'm spraying, like I want to be so close to the border without getting on the shrubs. Okay. So, I mean, I did, I can't leave a six inch gap but between um, the flower bed and, and the yard there, because if I do, it's just going to be covered with weed. I mean, our yards just get totally covered with weed. So, I mean, I put it in my hand where I can get right where I need to be. Uh, and I don't think it's that much slower, honestly, but yeah, I mean, I love riding. Don't get me wrong. When I'm out fertilizing and stuff, I'm riding and I'm trying to use my ride on equipment more and more. I'm spraying army worms, riding, um, but usually when I'm spraying uh, pre-emergent stuff, I'm still pulling a hose. You need to go to New Jersey. What's so great about New Jersey? I mean, I'm not opposed to going to New Jersey. I mean, it's, you know, but what, what, uh, what is there to do in New Jersey? I guess you can gamble. Uh, does your LTS have a propeller speed control? Let me say this. Next week, I think, okay, I think we're having two Xmark reps on here. And they're like the the Z spray experts. Okay, so if you're interested in talking Z sprays and LTSs, next week, uh, next Monday night, eight o'clock Central Time, we're planning to be on here again. Do you use your LTS have propeller speed control? If so, how wide do you normally spread? Um, yeah, so mine has the I've got one of the newer ones, and it has a, a digital. Uh, display up there so i can actually digitally control how fast the impeller is spinning um, same thing with the the spray i can adjust the pressure digitally uh, to me that's just something you gotta you gotta play with okay so i mean you gotta set it for your speed based on how fast you're you're driving and everything so um if you you, you just got to get out there and, and have some experience with it. Cause if you got the thing spinning super fast, you're throwing stuff everywhere. You know, to me, that's not good. So I, I'm coming from like a perma green ground logic background. I know kind of what I'm comfortable with throwing like a seven or eight foot wide pattern. And so I try to set it up to where I'm throwing a seven or eight foot wide pattern. Cause that's what I'm used to. Okay. So I think you just keep adjusting it until you get the pattern you're looking for. I've heard you say you like to use prodiamine in the spring and dismiss in the fall. 
Um, what are the benefits of switching and not just using pro, prodiamine? I, I don't really use dismiss in the fall. I'm using prodiamine, you know, like January, my round one and round two. Um, so January and in February and maybe into March. Um, is it, It's a cheap pre-emergent, works great on crabgrass and other weeds. Uh, in this fall for my pre I'm using Spectacle Flow. Um, and I'm actually thinking about starting to use Spectacle in the spring as well. I'm going to still use prodiamine, but uh, maybe come around May or so, start using Spectacle in the spring as well to help with some of these summer weeds, weeds like dove weed, and help with this Kalinga. And so this year, we just got killed with weeds. It was so much rain and stuff. So, uh, But anyway, prodiamine, you can use it in the fall as well. It's not going to work nearly as good on Pola annua. Uh, as spectacle flow. So that's one of the main reasons I use spectacle instead of prodiamine in the fall. What's your process for mixing up uh, prodiamine? Do you like mixing a bucket first or straight in the tank, trying to enjoy, uh, avoid issues with jet agitation? Say my, <coughs> excuse me, I've got uh, my gram spray tank. I've got a 400 gallon tank that's split okay so it's 300 on one side 100 on the other on the 100 side i've got jet agitation on the 300 side i've got mechanical agitation so to answer your question i, I you know i'll put water start filling the tank with water and then just pour it in there straight i don't mix it in a bucket but that mechanical agitation side is churning the water so aggressively that i don't have any concerns about it not being uh, properly agitated the jet agitation is is not nearly as good um, but it is constantly churning it so like so for instance let's say i mix both sides up with prodiamine and i'm out there spraying all day with the 300 side well the whole day i'm spraying the the while i'm spraying the small side has got the jet agitation it's continued to recycle the water through and continue to agitation so you know, by the time I use it, it, it's pretty well agitated. You know, if I was going straight to the jet agitation side, um, and if that's all you had, maybe you would want to do something like you're talking about, make sure it was a little more diluted before you poured it in the tank. But with my situation, I've got such good agitation, it is just not a big deal. What's well, the best way to kill Bermuda grass? I don't know if you're trying to kill it out of a have a different kind of lawn or, or just kill it kill it i mean glyphosate is what we use to kill it with but i'll say this my yard i basically tried to just totally redo my yard about two years ago i pretty much documented on youtube and i think i sprayed it twice with glyphosate and it it was um it was still it, i still didn't kill it all i'll just say that it's hard to kill very hard to kill Sorry, not just man. I meant dimension. Yeah, I'm not really using dimension much at all. And um, I, I dimension for those of you who don't know, like so, what we use it for is like I'll use prodiamine January and February. Um, well, if I get somebody that signs up, let's say late March or into April, you the crabgrass is probably already germinated in my area, so we might go with dimension to try, it has some reach back ability. So it, to try to kill that baby crabgrass, I've almost quit doing that. I've started just going with prodiamine and putting a crabgrass post emergent in there. Something like I was using Q-Ball this year, which Queen Clorac products. Um, but doing that, it was, it was still, um, I still, I mean, it's just hard to kill. It's like, I wish I could just get the prodiamine down before it germinates. And after that, I just have a conversation with the customers like, listen, we're going we're gonna to put a crabgrass post in here. Um, whether it's dimension, you use dimension, or whether you do like I'm doing prodiamine with a quinclorite product, it's just hard to kill. So Justin says, thank you for doing this. I kind of enjoy it uh, for the most part. Uh, Gregory says, good night. I live in Caribbean Trinidad. It's good weather for grass to grow. What's the best FS power cutter to buy? I'm not sure what FS power cutter is. Maybe he's talking about what we call a weed eater or string trimmer or a weed whacker or whipper snipper, as they call it over in maybe Australia. Uh, I can't remember if it's the, you know, the England people, British people call it whipper snipper or the Aussies. Aussies. Um, but it, I like Husqvarna, uh, to be honest with you. I know a lot of people use steel, echo, things like that. I'm, I'm kind of, I like Husqvarna handheld equipment. So that's what I use.
My all-time favorite is Husqvarna 326 LS. It weighed nine pounds. I'm using my now. I'm using a Husqvarna 525 LS, which is a little bit heavier. Got good power. It's fine. I just I like the 326 better personally. Um, Randy says I sprayed MSMA on my Bermuda as it was regrowing. Army worms hit. What now? Randy is most likely not dead. It just took the color out of it. Give it a few weeks, water it. It'll probably start turning green again. But what I'm telling people is, listen, we don't have that much time left before it's going to start transitioning and losing color anyway. So whether it's ever going to regain the beauty it had back in July, maybe not, okay, just because the days are getting shorter. But yeah, it shouldn't be dead. It should come back. Arm worms just... When they eat it, they eat it, and they damage it. And I just try to keep talking people off a cliff, like, listen, your yard's not dead. Uh, mansion is cheap, no frills dimension. I'm not sure I understand. I'm, I'm not sure if I uh, – maybe saying there's a product called Mansion that's a, a cheaper version of dimension. So. Daniel's Lawn Care says, hello. All right. What is more expensive, liquid versus granular and a better quality, in your opinion, speaking of fertilizer? So, uh, well, it's kind of a tricky question. So, you know, I know a lot of people with cool season grasses will use liquid fertilizers. Here in the South, um, we don't use them as much. You can put a lot more nitrogen on the granular, and it's going to last a lot longer than the liquid. So, in that sense, it, to me, it's, it's significantly cheaper, whether it's cheaper on that application, but we're talking about – um, my granular product that I'm putting out there that's going to last four months and continue supplying nitrogen to the lawn, um, I think you'd have, be hard-pressed to find a liquid product that would be able to do that. So, um, you know, I'm not sure sticker price, but we, we use granular because for, for the amount of nutrients you're putting in the soil, I, I think it's cheaper. Larry, what brand pre-emergent do you recommend I could buy? I've been using Furlome. I live in Hayden, Alabama. I know where that is, and I normally get it from Keith Landscape. Um, you know, as far as brand goes, I I don't I, I buy from Harold's. It's my supplier that I don't they don't typically sell to just homeowners, but um, you can I know where Keith Landscape is. I buy from them too. Um, I buy some sod there and different different stuff from time to time, mulch and pine straw. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that's fine if you want to get the fertile on, just whatever. I mean, just, it's more about the active ingredient we're going for. So if you, you want to get the prodiamine in January or February for your lawn, then, yeah, get that. If you want to get – you can use prodiamine in the fall, too. It's better than nothing. Try to get it out before we start getting those cool nights in October. Um, like I said, I'm using Spectral Flow, but it's a lot more expensive. But prodiamine – would, would greatly help. Shane, I appreciate you, man. Five bucks. He says, thank you. Azaleas and no border it is. I tell you, I, if these Encore Azaleas, they bloom like crazy. I mean, they just, I've seen some at uh, somebody's house and it's like every time I go over there, they're still blooming, you know, where the uh, more traditional Azalea blooms one time in the spring. But if you get the Encore, now they cost more, but they sure do uh, bloom a lot. What's the best for taking out bind we i'm not familiar with that weed i'm sorry i don't think we have that around here my backyard has been invaded by bermuda grass in colorado it's bad i'm sad i want to stop it help well i said that people with these cool season yards can't y'all just kill the whole yard and just reseed it and have the yard in a few weeks i mean like i said we can't really do that here um but i i don't know as far as getting bermuda grass it, it's pilex it seemed like if i remember reading right pilex might be a product that can help get bermuda out of out of a cool season lawn but i'm not 100 sure on that over here in the land down under we're almost spring which means reno time one so i guess daniel is in uh, australia daniel do y'all call a, a what we call a string trimmer or weed eater weed right is it y'all call it a a strimmer, one of them, somebody calls it a strimmer, somebody calls it a whippersnipper. I can't remember if it's the British people call it a strimmer and the Aussies call it a whippersnipper or vice versa. Can you, Daniel, can you clarify that for me? Millie W, never dethatch cool season during dormancy. All you're doing is tearing out grass, waiting to come back. 
Thank you for that advice, Michael. He's helping. Yeah, and if you guys see a question on here and I don't know the answer, you guys chime in just like Michael did. I appreciate you helping there. Roundup and Surfland work great for pre and post. All right. Got quite a bit of Dallas grass in my yard. Does Celsius kill it completely or I need to dig it up? Centipede yard. Celsius, I mean, you know, if you use probably more than the legal rate multiple times, you might eventually get rid of it in the fall would be your best chance. I mix Celsius and certainty together, and they, it, it's hard in a centipede yard. I mean, if you could dig it up, that'd be great. But if you want to put Celsius or Celsius and centipede, I'm sorry, Celsius and certainty together in the fall, spray it multiple applications maybe you you can finish it off but it is tough especially in a centipede yard thinking about going full-time lawn care so i can have more time with the kids the job i have is going from 5 30 a.m to 7 p.m man that's a oh you like you're a logger i guess dirty south logging yeah i mean you know unfortunately for a lot of people in lawn business they work long hours too now you, so you have to figure out how to generate you replace your income. I mean, you definitely make money. Sometimes people get sucked in and they start working tons of hours. But I appreciate your desire here to spend more time with your kids. And uh, certainly many people have made the leap on their own and done well. I don't know your business skills, business background, marketing abilities, but I certainly wish the best for you. Antonio Bryan says, what's good for crabgrass growing in fescue? Thank you. You know, I'm not... You'd have to check the label on those, some of those on those quinclorac probably. I think you can use those on cool season lawns as well. So I like to say I'm using Saltaire. There's um, Q ball. There's uh, shoot, what's some of the anyway the active ingredient quinclorac. You may can just find online some generic quinclorac product. That's the uh, post emergent for crabgrass. Okay, so but like I said, what we want to do is prevent as much as we can with our pre emergent. So we're printing something over here. So if you hear the printer going off, that's what's going on. Justin is down in Mobile, Alabama. I was down there a few months ago fishing. When are you starting to put out spectacle flow where you are? So you're you're further south than me, obviously. So I'm going to need to get mine out a little bit earlier than you are. I'm going to start. My plan is to start the day after Labor Day. So uh, what Labor Day is the sixth maybe or seven I, I don't know i'm gonna plan to start something like that um and again I, i'm taking care of hundreds of properties i'll probably be early on some just right on others and late on others okay so i'm mixing simazine with it and we put 24d in there or metsulfuron something to help with just as a post emergent for the weeds hopefully the simazine and the spectacle if some poa is already germinated Hopefully that combination will be able to knock it out, even if it's in a baby stage. If not, I have to deal with it later. You know, come back and there's stuff you can do with the post merger. But like I said, I'm planning to start spraying the day after Labor Day. It'll probably take me till uh, I'm gonna guess October the 20th to finish. Maybe sooner if I can get out there and you know work hard, try my best. <laughs> so. What's the best way to kill Bermuda grass? Man, you, well, you guys are all trying to kill Bermuda grass. That's all we have around here, just about Bermuda grass. Uh, again, if you're just trying to kill something, just use glyphosate. But I, I don't know if you're trying to kill it out of a different lawn or what. Dave Fuller, in the bedding, use fusillade, fusillade. I'm not sure I say that for the lawn. Solarize it. All right. Oh, oh, he's talking about how to kill Bermuda grass, I guess. All right. Brandon here. Just want to thank you for coming out and looking my lawn. Brandon, I, every once in a while I get a customer who w finds me on YouTube. I don't have a lot of them, but every once in a while somebody says, you know, I actually found you on YouTube. And and because I, you know, believe it or not, I do run a local lawn care business and I spend way more time doing that than I do on YouTube. YouTube is my side gig. Okay. Um, and uh, Brandon found me on online. He was asking about it. He's looking up stuff on Bermuda grass. He uh, got in touch with me. I went out, met him the other day. We took a look at his lawn. I just try to shoot him straight. I said, "Listen, here's here's what we do. Um, I tr I try my best not to badmouth any competition. I just say this is our program." And uh, he gave he's gonna give me a shot. So I appreciate that. And we're gonna hopefully get his yard as best we can. I take I take my local lawn business 
serious and I want to keep doing that. Well, I'm always trying to improve my own program. Well, I even, you know, I, I kind of like, I wouldn't want to sit on a computer all day doing YouTube. So I, I like getting out there and working in the yard. Is Nuts Edge a perennial? Uh, I believe it is, unfortunately. So there's some annual sedges. Some of the Kalingas, I think, are annual sedges, but I think your um, yellow and purple nut sedge are perennials, if I'm not mistaken. How to tell a customer that I need more money to mow your yard? Thank you. Uh, it's a great question. And, you know, you might make it through the rest of this year if you want to, or go ahead and have a conversation. I mean, to me, it's some, there comes a point where you got to decide, am I willing to lose this customer if I don't go up on their price? And, I, and, and you need to be willing to lose them, in my opinion. Now, if you're just desperate for money and you got to have them, it, it may be a little more tricky. But if you're at the point where, like, listen, I, I've got to go up because I'm not being profitable, then what's the worst thing that's going to happen? You lose them and you no longer have an unprofitable yard. So, I mean, it's better to lose an unprofitable customer than to keep them at an unprofitable rate. And with that being said, I mean, you, you can do a letter or an email. I wouldn't text them I would eat, or a letter or email or just call and just talk to them if you feel like you have that relationship and just say, listen, you know, things have gone up. My overhead's gone up and your, pri your price is instead of $55, it's going to be $60 uh, moving forward. And just talk to them about it. You know, if they pitch a fit, you know, you may have to just say, well, I don't, I'm not, it's not going to work out. And you try to start finding customers that will fit your price range. Because there's people that will pay for quality. I'm convinced of that. All right. What would you do if bagworms are killing your cedar bushes? I am not the tree expert. I, I'm sorry. Uh, but you, you, you could probably, there's got to be some insecticides that will help with that. I've actually got a mosquito fogger, one of those backpack things, you know, that is probably an insecticide you can put in there um, to spray that. But you may, in, a, in your situation, you may have to uh, call a local company to take care of that for you. What software do you use? How many customers do you have? All right, Liam. So I'll, uh, I'm using Yardbook, and I've been using Yardbook for about six years now. I really like Yardbook. My business... Uh, I don't always talk about this on, online. I actually downsized my business last year. So I was growing at a pretty healthy rate. And I had a, two trucks and somebody helping me part-time. I, I was up to about 480 yards. And I shrunk it down to about 250, okay? Well, this year it's crept back up to around 300 yards. Um, but I'm I'm trying to, you know, he's had his make up my mind. Do I want to try to go big? I was at close to 500. I could have probably been at 700 now, you know, maybe running three trucks. But for me, just doing YouTube, having four kids and just, I, it was just what I wanted to do. So I shrunk it down, sold off uh, some clients to a friend of mine. It helped him. He's trying to go big. I was trying to go small. Um, I went back so low and I'm currently sitting at about 300 customers. What do you think about North Star skid sprayers? I haven't used one, but I, you know what? If you if that's what you need, I like to buy from Graham Spray Plant. If that was what you need to get started, then get one and, and get out there and start spraying. But um, you know, it's probably I don't know if one of them costs like you know people get less go ones in North Star. I don't know if it's two or three thousand bucks, but whatever you need, you know, to me. I wouldn't get anything smaller than 200 gallon because you, you end up running out in the middle of the day, have to stop what you're doing, go back refill. I mean, mine's 400 gallon. I, I almost never run out during the day. So, you know, make sure you're getting something big enough for what you need and has agitation. If it's something that, if it's a starter tank, then it is what it is. Get out there and start making money and upgrade when you can. I love my Bermuda because it does not need as much water. And he is in Kansas. You're right about that. Bermuda is extremely drought tolerant. We well, it was been about four years ago. Uh, we had a, I mean, I don't know if it's worst drought in a hundred years or what. But I mean, it was like two months, and, and it wasn't cool weather. It was August and September, hot and so dry. We lost lots of uh, people. Lost a lot of trees, shrubs. And zoysia and centipede struggle, but I'm telling you, I don't know if I saw Bermuda grass today, and it was crunchy brown, but it won't, 
it's just very drought tolerant. So you're you're great. It will turn brown, you know, but it, it won't hardly die. Um, let's see here. So um, best way to kill douse grass and simply we did touch on that earlier. It's very difficult. I think Celsius and certainly combines by as good as you can do in the fall with surfactant, multiple applications. Kansas here too, but fescue just like 99% of the grass here. Let me ask you guys who's got the fescue. How how tall are y'all mowing it when y'all are laying those awesome stripes? I mean, are you, are you is it like four inches? I mean, is that when you mow it that tall? Because well, you know, I'm trying to mow my grass an inch and a half. Do you service people's yard for weed control part and fertilizer? I cut like every three days. My yard looks nice, but could always be better. Do you ever real mow? I don't real mow. I do weed control and fertilizer fertilization yes yeah, so uh, no i don't real real mow i live on four acres uh it takes me an hour and a half or so to cut my yard with a 60 inch zero turn so i am definitely not real mowing it i do have a little driving range area in the back so if i had a real mower maybe i would make me a nice putting green double dragon says hey jason hope you're well sir i am doing fairly well i said earlier for those of you on here i've had a little bit of health issues i have some digestive problems that put me in the hospital for I lost about 20 pounds but I'm feeling much better and uh nowhere to go but up I had a had a rough couple of times having trouble gaining the weight back though the stuff I'm on a strict diet I'm eating like a horse but the stuff I'm eating is just hard to gain any weight you you can eat just about as many green beans as you want and just hard to gain weight. So that's kind of what I mean. Fish, green beans, applesauce, and eggs uh, regularly. And no dairy, no grains, just trying to get, get well. But I'm, I'm definitely much better than I was a couple weeks ago. All right, starting week control next year. All right, Kevin, happy for you. Should I just uh, use a skid or is it worth to go ahead and purchase a ride on? Uh, it depends on your budget and your situation. I mean, if you were just going to get one, I would get the skid sprayer. Uh, to me, it's, it's very versatile, and you can get a push sprayer. But, I mean, if, if you know you, if you can afford it, if you know you're going to be in it, uh, pushing is no fun, especially where I live. we got a few hills. So I try to get away from the push spreader as quickly as possible and get a ride-on um, spreader. But like I said, I'm still using my skid, uh, my spray tank most of the time for any for liquid apps you know I, I do spray with my machine some but when i'm out there spraying pre-emergent like this next round I'll be spraying my fall pre and post emergent i'm using my spray tank on almost all my properties would you run a lawn mowing gig i've i used to have a lawn mowing business i actually had three lawn mowing businesses over my time uh, my current business i was mowing and spraying i just started spraying um and before that, I had a mowing business. Before that, I had a mowing business. So I do uh, understand lawn mowing. I've done a lot of it. It's fine. It's not something if you want to be like solo. It's, it, to me, it's very difficult to make it near as much money as you would spray, and especially in the South where we can spray year-round. Um, so it's a big advantage. But, no, I have nothing against mowing. People make tons of money mowing lawns. I just don't think it's an ideal solo gig, in my opinion, uh, you wear yourself out. The weed control, um, you, one person can usually do significantly better. But yeah, I like lawn mowers. I enjoy all that stuff. Kansas here as well. It says I have a place with buffalo grass. I'm gonna try to use. All right. Does uh, dove weed and goose grass recommended cheaper than tribute? All right, dove weed. I'll just tell you this, Jeff. I'm I'm starting to. That's I had. Four yards. All right, so dove weeds are getting worse and worse in my area. I, I Last year, I had four yards I considered had a serious dove weed problem. So what I did this year was I, I waited and, and did their second round of pre-emergent later, like in – I'd spray it in January or February, okay, round one. Then I'd push them back to, like, April, and I did their second round of pre-emergent, and, and I said I used spectacle – flow and and then fertilize it at the same time and i double build them i said i'm gonna do two apps at once round two and round three in april well from my understanding is maybe i was a little bit too early on that. i did feel like i got good results i saw some significant improvement in the dove weed this year i'm going hopefully spectacle in may okay may and in, on into early june to help with the dove weed. so that's 
That's one answer, okay? And, and you asked for cheap. I gave you spectacles, so that might not be what you're looking for. From a post-emergent standpoint, um, though we, I mean, it's, it's like Surge is, is, a, from my understanding, one of the best products you can use. not that expensive. So you may look into Surge. That's about the only thing I use it for, to be honest with you, is a post-emergent for Dove Wee. Uh, blindside Celsius, but almost all of them going to take two apps. So I'm going to try to get ahead of some of them with the spectacle. Not just for the dove weed, but help with the Kalinga, help with the Spurge. Uh, did I say Spurge or I meant Surge for the herbicide, but Spurge, the weed, is what I'm hoping the spectacle help with some of that chamber bitter and things like that. Goosegrass, I think, I mean, you use the quinclorac products, I believe, like Solitaire and things like that. I think also Dismiss NXT is supposed to be a pretty good goosegrass product. Um, you know, tribute obviously is, is good, but it, it does have a price tag on it. So hope that helps, Jeff. Would you run a lawnmowing gig with your kids? Uh, I got a, I got a son. If he wanted to start a lawnmowing business, I wouldn't have to be opposed to that helping him. I probably at this point want him to kind of give him the – he's not old enough right now, but give him the control. I, I don't want to – all my sons and my daughters to um, actually have a daughter starting her own business. And I want to obviously be there to guide them, but I want them to embrace it on their own, make their own mistakes, have their own successes, and hopefully do better than dad did. So, um, yeah, I think summer lawn business for a high school uh, kid is awesome. Make more money, learn more, work harder than uh, almost any other job you're going to get working, you know, some fast food place. I got a bunch of elite fescue, almost went bluegrass, but wait until next year too. All right. Sorry if you already answered, but do you put me now in September? What, when exactly? What do you mix with it? Can I do it together with Celsius and Sedgehammer? Good question, um, Oliver. You you can, again, I don't know where you live. I'm in Alabama, okay, We're around Birmingham. So you want to get your pre-emergent now. I mean, ideal time. You know, I was talking to my wife today. So you know that that October morning where you walk outside and it went down in the 50s and you say, oh, wow, it feels like fall, you know. Well, you want to have your pre-emergent out before that happens, okay, because that might be the night the uh, POA germinates. So get it out before that night happens and get it watered in, okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm going to start day after Labor Day spraying my pre-emergent. That may take me on into, February, um, on into October to finish all my customers, but I'm putting I'm putting spectacle. But I said, you can use Prodiamine. It just doesn't work as good on POA, but it's certainly much better than nothing. Um, and then you put uh, Simazine with it. So if I was going to use Prodiamine, I'd put Simazine with it to help um, help with the POA, help with some of the other weeds. Um, and then... So, and then I put 2,4-D with our med cell fear and to help just post-emergent finish stuff off. I mean, Celsius is would be a much more expensive product to taint mix with it. So, I mean, I'm not going out spraying Celsius, especially that late in the year. It's like, I mean, what are you, what are you trying to kill with the Celsius? You know, I put 2,4-D or med cell fear on it, which is relatively cheap to finish off some spurge or maybe there's some cool season weeds that's already germinated. So, I think there's a lot cheaper options than, than Celsius and Sedgehammer. By that point, I'm give up on my sedges. I'm going to wait until fall kills though, winter gets rid of them. So I'm not even worried about sedges at that point. So what's your thoughts on the robotic mowers? Man, I like to see one up close in person. I've seen one or two in my area, but I think that things are, are awesome. I, if they can make it work, great. I think it's I'm all for it. I have no problem with it. I think, you know, like any business, if you had a, a video rental store, big box rental store, you have to adapt. Now everybody streams everything. I mean, you know, so um, you have to adapt. So if, if robots are part of the adapting, then let's, you know, adapt or get left behind. Omega says, how many ounces a year do you put with spectacle with good results? So I've been using six and a half in the fall, six and a half ounces per acre. And I'm hoping to use six ounces in the spring. I got to check the label, make sure I'm legal on that. Like I said, but that's, I've been definitely doing six and a half, one shot in the fall. And then on the spring, I want to use it to try to help with the dove weeds and these other problems. All right. Richard's outdoor. Oh, he was asking about the, some kind of worms eating up his cedar bushes. He said, uh, an insecticide with, I don't even know how to say these words. I'm sorry. 
uh, such as ortho, tree and shrub, insect killer, available on Amazon, and can rid you of your bag worm problem. So, yeah, thank you for that, Michael. So he's giving us an insecticide here he can put because he's getting his shrub, cedar shrubs are getting eat up with bag worms. Lama says crunchy brown. Yeah, that's what we call dead weed. May I talked about the Bermuda grass got crunchy brown. Follow up on Nutsage. Picture this app says it's purple Nutsage, but that's not always accurate. Ordered Sage Hammer. How long will a mix last? I'll mix a gallon, but that's more than I need. <clears throat> I don't know, man. I, I, I've been more prone to leave mine in the tank longer than, you know, if it sits in the tank two weeks, do I think it's not any good anymore? No, I, I'd still use it. But, uh, you know, if you mix up a gallon now and you spray your own yard, it's not going to be around that much longer. I mean, unless you live in South Florida or something, you know, I mean, it, it's going to slow down. So I'd spray it. And if you need to spray it again and fall is a good time to go after. So just spray it. And um, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. if it sat in there a month, I'd still use it. But again, I don't know the science behind that. I'm sure it probably loses some effect in this over time. All right. I'm going to give, uh, we got about five more minutes, so I'm going rapid fire here. Best use four and a half inches. All right. Thank you for that. I asked or how, how tall they cut their grass. Do you recommend split apps with spectacle or one app? I'm doing one app. Um, you can do split. I've heard uh, pros and cons of, of both sometimes. Um, but anyway, I'm doing one app. Three and a half to four inches on the fescue. Uh, three and a half to four. Uh, Mike says four. Um, all right, let's see. Fish you at 3.75. So anyway, somewhere between three and a half, four inches. That's great. Um, oh no, I'm glad you're feeling better. And I have stomach problems going since I turned 36 and 38. Now, yeah, it's uh it was a little bit rough. I'm, I may have to cut back on my eating a little bit. So Oliver's in Florida. I can't remember what Oliver was asking. I'm sorry. Um, Dustin, how often do you spray Teenex Primo on Bermuda lines? That's my growth regulator. I only did it maybe – I think I only did it once this year. I'm going to mostly just do it on my own yard. And leaf hoppers, I'm not sure if Tal – I'm using Tal Star for most of these insect problems. I don't know if leaf hoppers are on there or not. Um, you could check the label. But I only did my – and the reason I only did it once because I'm trying – you know, sometimes people say the growth regulator helps it fill in bare spots. I'm not sure I've seen that. And I've still got areas I'm trying – I've plugged my whole yard basically, so I'm trying to get it to fill in. And um, so anyway, that's why I, I quit using it because I just wanted to fill in. Uh, anyway, oh, Oliver's asking, he's one, he's asking about when to put your prodiamine out. If you're in South Florida, I mean, I mean, I don't know. It's just a little bit different down there because you may never get, it may never freeze. It probably doesn't. So you're not, you know, I just, I don't know. You may not have the same weeds. It doesn't ever freeze. Like we just, we can't, I can't wait for it to freeze the first time because it just fixes a lot of my problems. All those weeds just go away. But anyway, if you're in South Florida, it's, it's kind of going to be a lot post-emergent down there because you, it's just, the weeds, it just never gets cold enough. Hey, Jason, tuning in from California. Appreciate that. Monument versus tribute total. Which situation would you prefer one or the other? I mean, tribute total is, is kind of like, more expensive, but if you like for our Bermuda zoysia grasses, I mean, that's what if you just want to simplify things and spray sedges, grassy weeds, and broadleaf weeds, you use tribute total. I don't use it that much. Monument, I don't use it's my what's the active ingredient? Monument, I, I'm not is that metsulfuron or is that something else? anyway? Uh, I'm not sure, but tribute's great, it's just you know a little bit pricey. I oftentimes mix Celsius and certainty together, but I'm not really sure that's any cheaper than tribute total. I might be better just getting tribute total. Uh, the weeds here in South Florida are sedges and Florida personally. Yeah, you probably gonna, I mean, you probably just need to go post-emergent on, on most of those. I'm not sure pre-emergent is gonna help you um, as much as far as when to put your pro I mean, out down there. I mean, I, I just, I don't know if y'all have, you might not have pole or anything. How do you winterize your spray tank? I have a 200 gallon tank. Well, you have to, 
like if you Google winterize your spray tank or, or search for it on YouTube, Graham did some videos and they show how you get the water. Now it's on their tanks, but you get the water out of the pumps and everything. You don't want those pumps freezing. You don't want your gun, uh, the gun will freeze up in the gun. So uh, I've got a shop now where I can park mine inside, thankfully, but I have winterized it many times. Rapid fire. I got to get to the end. No more questions. I'm going to try to run through these. I received my yard in June with zoysia. I have a lot of crabgrass and poa. Post wait. I would I would wait. I wouldn't spray it. I would wait and just let it finish out its course this year and then try to uh, just get it established. I wouldn't go in there and hammer it with herbicide right now. Mark lives in eastern North Carolina. Oh, Oh, that's the active ingredient monument. I'm I'm sorry, I don't use monument much, so I apologize. Thank you for tuning in from California. Late to the party from Raleigh. Your weed ID videos, weed ID videos are helpful. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate you watching, Luke. Thank you. Lawn Master says, Thanks, brother. G says, You're a great dude. Can you iron my work clothes and that iron and stars behind you? Hey, man, this is our laundry room slash video room slash office slash pantry uh we got a it looks like we got the hugest laundry room all the time but we're using it for a lot of different things including youtube videos so um yeah I, I, thanks for noticing they start you hear the printer going off my wife's printing stuff as we hear and uh she's like they don't bother if you print something I said, hey that's what this we may wash a load of clothes while we're here so all right i made it to the end of the list and it's been uh, it's been an hour. Somebody, oh, Michael says you can use pink antifreeze if you don't uh, winterize your spray rig. I tell you what, having own, my own shop has been awesome. Parks parking inside in the winter. Appreciate you watching. I hopefully, like I said, now that I'm back in my own house, the video and audio quality should be far superior to that um, than before. Let me say this: if you're going to the GIE X GIE Plus Expo. The early bird registration, I think, in September 9th. I they give us affiliate link. Uh, my code is VIPLCF. VIPLCF. If you go to register and you use that code, you will get half price off your ticket. So it's 20 bucks, but if you use that code, you'll get it for 10 bucks. Um, so you might consider uh, registering. I booked my hotel room the other day. I'm going to be on some kind of panel thing. They got some YouTubers that are doing a panel, I think, Friday morning at eight o'clock or nine o'clock or something. And I've been asked to be on that with Alan Hain and uh, I forget who the other people are, but uh, looking forward to that. What's the name of my business? Uh, my business is Alabama Lawn Pros. This is my third lawn care business and uh, my favorite one so far. Appreciate you guys watching. If you're in the lawn business, want to start one, there are resources, lawncarelife.com. That's my website. Um, you can go back and watch this on replay. If you miss anything, next Monday night, hopefully they're going to have the x -Mark guys on here talking about the Z-spray and all that. Uh, need help with goose grass. How, how she, I think you can use Quinn Clark products or dismiss NXT for your um, – for your goose grass well, spectacle in the spring, is it prodiamine more cost effective? Yeah, I'm trying to get ahead of the the dove weed, man. It's killing me. Dove weed, kalinga, all spurs. I'm gonna try to I'm, instead of I'm still gonna use prodiamine, okay? But I'm I'm trying to get some spectacle out like in May or June to help me with summer weeds. I got I, my spring my yard. I was bragging about how great my yards looked in in May, and by July I was had a bag over my head looking at some of my yard like this so and that, a lot of it had to do with the amount of rain we had this year but i'm thinking that i go with spectacle in may it's going to really help with the double weed problem one but also just trying to keep some of those out because you know what it's pre or post emergent you know about the i'd rather get them with a pre-emergent than be walk around with a post emergent trying to spot treat them in july and august if i can prevent most of them with that pre emergent yeah it costs money but that's just my thoughts Thought um, will go up in price. What I'm doing is uh, going from seven apps to eight apps. So I think adding that extra app is going to help absorb a lot of the cost uh, for me and make me more profitable. So, yeah, but uh, I think some of you may need to consider going up in prices because I know chemical prices have gone up, fertilizer prices have gone up, seed prices have gone up. So, yeah, if you're if you're not going up on your prices, you may consider so. But for me, you just add an extra. And eight apps is not that unusual around here. Anyway, a lot of competitors are doing eight, some doing nine, some may even do twelve, I think. So anyway, appreciate you guys watching. I'm out. We will talk to you 
Later. Bye.